Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions on the one channel where I get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? On today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to use QGIS to calculate volumes of cut and fill, right? So we have a digital elevation model here and then we have an extent we want to cut. Let's change the symbology to have a better understanding of the terrain. So we make this about 4 that color ramp is okay and then we leave it at this now from the color ramp we can see that we are having elevations from blue to red and then the values the color from blue to red rather and elevation from 351 to 1380 right good so now this portion we have actually highlighted shows um so much of those um reddish um, portion right so we are going to calculate the volume of cut because it's actually mountainous if it were a pit we are going to calculate the volume of fill right it's now these are key concepts that are very important so we are going to determine what a base level and then try to calculate the volume of cut to that particular base level so to start we are going to clip or yeah we are going to clip to this particular extent and then reproject what that raster so we come back to raster under extraction we click on um, clip raster by extent then the extent will be the boundary and then we run good so we are now going to work with what this our clip raster the next thing is for us to check the projection the projection is actually in a geographic um, crs which means it uses what latitude and longitude as the unit so we are going to change that we are going to change what the projection that's by warping right good so we come down to we come down to projection and then we click on warp the input is what the clipped and then the source is actually wgs 84 then the target will now be zone 33 of the utm because that's where this um this location falls we leave every other thing as default and we click on run so we now have what um a projected what them that has been clipped to our area of interest right good now if we still decide to change the symbology of this particular digital elevation model to have um, a better understanding of the terrain we can still see that yes we have some um, mountainous area as it is being indicated from what the color ramp and then the values right good the next thing is for us to create contours so we can see the contour lines right good those lines that are joining points of equal elevation so we come down to raster then under extraction we click on contour so the input is uh, reprojected and then let's use an interval of about 100 or let's say 50 right good then this will be the attribute name for the um, elevation values right good so we are leaving everything as default and we click on run good so we have what the the contours are displayed on our what on our map we can decide to change this color to something brighter should we use blue just for the purpose of today's tutorial or we should just okay so now we can decide to open the attribute table here and then we can see if we sort we are going to see elevations from 550 up to 1450 right good so the lowest is about 550 and then the highest is about 1450 so we are now going to apply this to what to calculating the volume so if you look closely let's try to label so that we can see the values we come down to label single label not the fid but the elevation right good then let's still use red then we click on ok now if we want to label if we zoom in a bit we are going to see about 650 600 we are also seeing around 800 900 now we are seeing a few things about the base level right good so let's search for the tool we want to use 
we want to use um, volume raster surface volume right good now the parameters for this particular algorithm you can read the description here so that you have a better understanding of some of the choices we are going to make now for the input layer we are using the reprojected because the reprojected has what um, a CRS that is in meters right good for a CRS in meters and them in meters so then the base level now we are trying to say something about the base level that if we are cutting which means our base level will be lower than the highest point and if we are filling which means our base level will be higher than what the lowest point right good because in this case we can see elevations of about 1400 and we want to adopt a base level of let's say 800 which means we are only trying to calculate the volume from that 800 upwards to 1400 right good so that is the volume of earth material that will be cut that will now make the terrain to come down to that maybe 800 level right good so if it's a case of a filling whereby you have an excavated portion maybe like a borrow pit or something and then you know that the base level is actually higher than the depth of the what of the excavation so let's say the depth of the excavation has got into one meter and then you want to fill it up to three meters right good just using some hypothetical values you want to fill it up to maybe three meters right so you are now going to use the base level as three and then you already know that your the depth of the excavation is one so the volume of earth material that will now fill from that one meter to what to the three meters so that's for what for the filling however in our case we are doing what cutting right good so which means we are now trying to cut all of those materials that are now above our base elevation right so we are going to adopt a base elevation of let's say 800 right good so we still come back to the parameters and then we use base level of um, 800 right now under the method we are going to see it will explain now count only above what the base level if you use count only above the base level you are trying to get a cut volume right good because you know the base level is lower than what the highest point in your data set right good but if you still come back to use count only below the base level you can still determine some volume but the volume you'll be getting will be what volume that are actually below your base level so for us to understand it in the context of cut and fill we are trying to say that when you are counting only above the base level you are actually trying to cut so that you now get to that base level and then when you are counting below the base level which means you have what a higher point and then your data set has some points that are lower so you want to know how much of earth material to fill those lower points or to fill from that lower point down up to your up to your base level right but so these are some important um, fact about what these two methods that um, we have come to realize so we have seen from our data sets that our highest point is over 1400 so we are adopting from the contour values 800 and then we are using the method that um, counting only above the base level so we are counting from 800 to 1400 so that we now cut from 800 to 1400 so that we now have we now have a terrain that has elevation of what about 800 so for the surface volume report we save to file so let's call this um, volume report surface volume report then this is a surface volume table right surface volume table right so if all of these parameters are well set okay we can click on run okay so we can close this out and then we can um, open the surface um, volume report right good so from the surface volume report we have um, a value for the volume in cubic meters the number of pixel count 
and then the area in what in square meters right good so this has given us an idea of the amount of um, cuts that would um, be done to get to that um, elevation of about 800 from or based on our data set so thanks for coming to class we hope we have shown you exhaustively how to use um, QGIS to calculate depending on your data set right good and what you are trying to achieve the volume of cut and fill right good so we are going to see you on the next tutorial ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye